what if being healthy didn't have to be hard? What if you could create healthy new habits with ease? Have you ever heard yourself say, change is hard, weight loss is hard, creating healthy habits is hard. When we do, we're seeing evidence, we're remembering actions being hard in our past. And we simply believe and reinforce the statement. It feels true to us. What if you're wrong about that though? What if it doesn't have to be hard? What if it was only hard in the past because of the way you were going about it? In this video, I want to offer you a different approach. There's a different way to think about it. And there are practical things you could do today to make it easier. So hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Brian Granger. I'm a life coach and a weight loss coach. And I transformed my relationship with myself back in 2006. When I did, I lost 50 kilos and I've maintained that 50 kilo loss ever since. Now it's my mission to help other people transform their thinking and change the habits that created their weight loss into uh, their weight gain, sorry, into healthy new ones. So that people like you can not only reach a goal, but sustain it. I want to help people live more of their life at goal. You can check out my work and grab my 10 secrets to long-term weight loss at livemorelife.com.au. While you're there, you might also want to check out some of my other videos and grab the worksheet for today's video. You can find that link in the description. It's going to help you switch from your default habits to your desired routines. So how come it feels hard? Well, chances are the method you chose last time was either more effort than you imagined, or it required more attention or practice or time than you were willing to give it. You know, my philosophy is that living a healthy life is simply the accumulation, the sum of many, many small, easy choices. And it's only hard when we're trying to do everything at once or you're trying to make too big a change at one time. So what if you didn't do that? You know, the good news is our brain likes doing things that, eat, that are easy. You know, that's how we train in all of the automatic habits that we have in our life and in our body. Once we do something enough times, our brain goes, oh, I know how to do that now. We don't, don't have to consciously think about it. We just do it. Our brain stores it in the more primitive structures of our brain, like the basal ganglia. And it just runs those old patterns whenever it sees the cue to get started. And that's often why change feels hard because your brain's saying, I have already know how to do this. I've practiced it lots of times. This way is, you know, really strong neural connections in my body. This way is easy. So it's asking, it's worried. It's offering you the question, well, why change? This way is already fine. So that's an important question to answer. Why change? You know, when we come to change, it's because we realize the pattern that we've been running isn't serving us. It's moving us away from our goals. You know, if we're, I don't know, eating a bag of chips because we're tired or we're having a glass of wine um, or two <laughs> because we got through the day, only to have guilt and remorse, regret, you know, build up later. Only to feel like we haven't moved towards our goal at the end of the week. You know, we recognize that when we want to change, we want to move away from feeling tired and lethargic and, you know, having our clothes feel uncomfortable and having every movement be hard. We want to get away from something that doesn't feel great. 
Or alternatively, we have a vision of how our life could be better, could be more fulfilling, more productive, more energetic, more vital. We see a compelling argument for that vitality, that energy, that improved mental health, that greater sense of self-regard, that newfound confidence that comes when we do show up for ourselves and create change, when we overcome our obstacles. So if you're interested in making change, firstly ask, what is my reason for wanting change? And then whatever it is, you have to show your brain that there's another way. You know, it might not want to do anything different because it's easier to do the way it already knows. It doesn't have to do any effort, doesn't have to learn, just wants to keep doing it. So we have to consider how do we change that balance? How do you make the process of change easier? And ironically, one of the best places to look is actually looking at the habits that we want to change, our default habits. They can teach us so much because we've already done them. We've already made them easy. Ask yourself, have a look at some of the habits you want to change now in your life and ask, what have I already done to make this easy? Chances are you've done one of the following things. You've either made it convenient to do that thing, you've removed obstacles in the way to make it a clearer path, perhaps you've automated some of the steps, or you've reduced the cognitive load. You've made it so that your brain doesn't really have to think about it. Maybe you've just practiced it many, many times. I'm gonna go into each of these because there's lessons here that we can use. So, made it convenient. Just have to think about how many things you have in your life where you have what you need, where you need, when you need it, and how much easier it is when you do. Where's your toothbrush? My guess is it's probably in the bathroom, either on the sink, near the sink, on the wall attached to, uh, adjacent to the bathroom mirror. It's somewhere within arm's reach of where you stand when you want to brush your teeth. Sit if you're a person who doesn't stand. Um, it's convenient. Think about where your uh, pots and pans are in your kitchen. Right? You want to do some cooking i'm guessing the cooking implements the the cookware is in the kitchen not in a box in the cupboard in the shed it's probably closely located to the stovetop or the oven you probably keep your dishwashing detergent on the sink or in the cupboard under the sink notice we've made it convenient we have the thing that we need where we need it, when we need it. What about unhealthy food habits? Where are your unhealthy foods? Notice how much easier it is to mindlessly eat when it's right there in front of you. Think about last time, you know, maybe it was a while ago now, uh, when you're at a party or a gathering, there's just food all laid out on the table in front of you. How easy it is to mindlessly eat. Or perhaps, I don't know, you had a cake or something and you have it on the counter, on the kitchen bench. It's there, it's open. Um, you know, maybe it's under cover, but it might be available. It's very easy to go back to, it's very tempting. Every time your brain catches it, you go uh, in, the, in the corner of your vision, it's got a trigger to go, ooh, maybe I should have some of that now. Maybe I need to stock up for winter. Right. So compare that with how it feels like when you, know, you wanna make dinner, but you don't have all of the ingredients there ready, or you, you know, um, you haven't set yourself up. It's such a chore. Oh, I have to go get it. I have to decide what to eat. I have to get the ingredients. I have to cook them. Compared to if you had it already pre-prepped, prepared, already decided in advance, you'd done your shopping and had the, the ingredients there. You know, maybe 
it's simple as switching your unhealthy snacking might be as simple as putting a fruit bowl on the bench with some fruit you enjoy in it. How can you make the choice you want more convenient? How can you have what you need, where you need, when you need it? You know, I so often think about this as um, one of the benefits of prepping and preparing in advance. What about removing obstacles? James Clear talks about this in Atomic Habits as about removing friction. So things like laying out your exercise gear the night before or wearing it to bed. I know some people do that packing your gym bag so it's ready to go it's already in the car or it's by the front door maybe going to the gym on the way home instead of coming home and then having to get everything together and going back out again notice how much more difficult it is how much more challenging how more likely you are to interrupt the habit and get distracted do something else so can you get some obstacles out of the way can you fit the habit you want into routines you're already doing in your day. Don't make it extra steps, right? Try and get as many parts of it as possible out of the way. Reduce the number of steps overall or automate some of the steps. Wonder how many of the unhealthy habits you have automated. If you're a snacking after dinner person, do you always sit in the same place on the couch? Is it always the same routine done in the same order? Probably at about the same time. How automatic is it? You know, think about how many things we have in our lives that really just automate it. Um, I'm thinking here like uh, streaming services, for instance, they let you binge watch on demand instead of having to commit to making a certain time on a certain day available to watch your favorite show. In fact, streaming servers take it even further. You know, uh, they have autoplay turned on. You don't even have to press a button to go to the next episode. It just keeps going. Um, it recommends things for you. It decides that, no, here's the things you like. Here's more things. So we can just stay sedentary. So we can just be in the couch, right? So what if you automated some of your choices instead? Let's say you want to make healthier food choices. What if you found three healthy breakfasts or five healthy lunches that you enjoy? 10 dinners that are quick and easy, but also tasty and nutritious. And you could just put those meals on rotation. It's just choosing between them. It's actually one of the things I do. I have a great number of meals now that I really enjoy, that are quick and easy, they're convenient. And I have a series of them that I just kind of rotate through. And then I always like to try something new. So one of the routines I've created is also having something new every week. Let me make one new meal and all of the others are rotating through my favorites that I know work for me, that serve me in my journey. So can you automate? some of those things. You know, another way I automate is I have a standard shopping list. I have what I call my master list of things. These are things I grab every week. But if I have this list of things, I can get through an entire week with healthy choices, with food I enjoy, that can be satisfying. It makes it very easy. I also have that saved for my online shopping. So if I'm sick or ill or I don't have time or I'm traveling, I can just go, well, this is the list I need to get through a week. It's already there. It's already saved. I can just, uh, it's very, very fast to run it through. So are there ways you can automate some of the steps so that you don't have to think so hard? I talked here about reducing cognitive load. Sometimes we just think it's hard because our brain is making decisions all day, we're doing work, we've got choices, and 
it doesn't want to make any decisions when we get to the end of the day. We're mentally exhausted. By the way, that can be refreshed. That's why exercise in the afternoon is really amazing. Uh, you can exercise, you can do yoga, um, have a shower, some mindfulness activities, meditation. There's lots of different things you can do to refresh your cognitive load. In fact, it often only takes about five minutes. Can you reduce some of the burden on your brain? Can you reduce some of the steps? Can you automate some of the things? And finally, have you practiced? Think about how many times you've practiced the unhealthy habits you want to change. How many times have you turned to food when stressed? How many times have you practiced quitting, giving up on yourself, giving in to temptation, or starting again tomorrow, getting around to it later? Used to be a favorite of mine. No, I'll do it later. So to help you with the practice, I want to remind you that sometimes you don't need to master the whole habit at once. Very often, you just need to master the first step. You just need to get your brain into the habit of getting started with the new habit. You know, in his book, Atomic Habits, I mentioned it earlier, James Clear asked, what is the two-minute version of the habit? You know, if I want to be um, walking, I want to be uh, running a 5K fun run. Okay. Well, can I start by walking 5Ks? Can I start by walking 1K? Is the two-minute version, I walk to um, my front driveway. Okay. I actually like to go further. I like to think about the 30-second version and the 10-second version of the habit. I like to think of this as the gateway habit. Maybe if I want to be a person who walks every afternoon, the habit is I change my shoes into my walking shoes. That's the 10 second version that gets you started. Get into my exercise gear. If you're planning ahead meals for the week, something like that, I might create a list first of what are my healthy meals that I already enjoy. Let's make a list. How many do I already know? As we find new ones, add to it. So maybe your planning is not, oh my God, what could I come up with? It's, here's my list of 10 or 20 meals I like. Which ones do I want to start with? Maybe the 10 second habit is sitting down with a blank piece of paper or the blank meal plan. By the way, you can get one of those on my website as well. <laughs> Find your gateway habit. Sometimes you just have to practice that little book. You know, and if you decide that it's important, remember earlier I asked you to think about why you wanted to change. What was your reason? You have to stay connected to that in the moment, particularly in the moment when you're tempted to go back to an old habit. You have to really connect to your why. And I also want to consider what if it's okay that if you don't achieve the whole habit all at once? What if you allowed it to take longer to become a habit? than you want. In his book, Finish, John Acov recommends either, if you have a goal, like for instance, like a New Year's resolution or a, a goal you want to achieve, maybe like weight loss, um, and that you haven't been achieving it, you aren't making progress, he recommends either halving your goal, what if I lost half as much? What if I was mindful with my eating half the time or double the time frame of achieving your goal. Halve the goal, double the time frame in your expectation to do it. See how that feels. Does that feel more doable? Would you be willing to do that? Like seriously, ask yourself the question and answer it. How long would you be willing for it to take if it meant you got to keep it, you actually trained it in as a new habit you can do for the rest of your life on autopilot. If you learned how to solve this challenge for good, how long would you be willing 
for that to take. I always think it's worth it, right? So often we want to try and achieve things now, or yesterday, straight away. We want to just decide to do something and we go, oh, well, I should just be able to do it straight away. I logically know how. That's not the same as having put in the work, put in the practice, right? <laughs> I'm a fan of diving. So I might, um, uh, not, that I'm, not that I'm doing it, but I'm a fan of watching <laughs> diving. Um, and I'm like, oh yeah, I can see how they do that. I, I know how to do that now, but it's not the same thing as actually being able to do it, right? To being able to tone and move the muscle, to coordinate that energy, that, uh, that coordination, that focus, build the strength that is required. Remember, imperfect action beats perfect inaction every time. Think about that. How often when we want to do it fast, we want to get it solved completely, we try to go hard, then it feels hard. It seems like it's too much. We quit, we stop, and then we revert back to where we were. And then eventually we get sick of that and we do it again. We get sick of that and we do it again. We get sick of that and we do it again. We just reiterate this pattern of quitting. How long has it been since you first decided to live healthily, to make healthy changes, to be at goal weight. If it's a long time, I encourage you to consider, well, what if I stopped trying to do it all at once? What if I did it in smaller steps, smaller stages? What if I only had to learn one part of a skill first before I did the next thing? You know, I think about this sometimes when we're teaching children, right? I'm thinking about teaching children to write and then maybe write their name or something you know you start with learning to hold the crayon make marks on a paper right without ripping the paper up or <laughs> going everywhere and then we might get towards making a line or a curve we start to show them the shapes so developing that muscular control to be able to move our hand then we go to learning about the the shapes and the sounds of those shapes that match the spelling of their name. We get them to practice drawing those shapes, copying them, for instance, overriding them. We let them get it wrong heaps of times. Gradually, with iteration, with practice, they learn. Yet we don't seem to give ourselves the same grace when we want to prepare healthy meals or healthy snacks or stop overeating. We think it's just all or nothing rather than a series of learned skills. So can you break the routine, the habit that you want to make down into smaller actionable steps? What if you just focused on learning just the first step until it was automatic before moving on to the next? I so often find that when you do it this way, you actually get so much more momentum, so much more confidence, and you eventually develop the skill so much faster by being willing for it to take longer. Of course, sometimes it does still require mental effort, right? Our brain has the habit it wants to do. You have to tell it we're going to do something different, brain. So how can you free up your mental capacity? How can you reduce that cognitive load in other areas? This is where I love practicing one small skill at a time because then often it has a, as a follow-on effect to free up some cognitive load in another area of life, to let you do the next thing rather than struggle with the next thing. And that's why I love making decisions ahead of time. That's why I love planning ahead. You reduce your overall number of decisions. You're right, well, here's my hour I've set aside to plan ahead. Here's what I'm going to be eating this week. Now, by the way, when you're starting out, I say allow an hour. I can do it in hmm, five minutes, maybe now but that's because i've practiced many times reduce your overall number of decisions and then when it comes to making the decision stay present be mindful with the choice you're making in the moment give your brain a break and remember you don't have to decide all of the things at once you don't have to think about the million things going on in your life although you'll be tempted to instead what if you thought, 
I'm just making this choice now in this moment. Will I open this bag of chips or not? Will I portion out this bag of chips into the portion that I'd like or not? Will I make a different choice or not? Okay. Arthur Ashe says, start where you are. Use what you have. Do what you can. And I love this idea of simplicity here. You know, some things may still feel hard. When you make everything around it easier, you have more of your mental resources, more fortitude, more willpower to bring to that endeavor. And if you can't go all the way to make it easy, now apply these techniques, right? Try it. making it more convenient, removing the obstacles, automating some of the steps, um, reducing the cognitive load by bringing it down, breaking it down into smaller pieces and just practicing the first one. They will make it easy uh, for you, right? And ultimately make it easy. But if it still feels hard and you can't go all the way to this is hard to this is easy, go to neutral. What if you just said, this is just what I'm doing right now. This is just what I'm working on. So often we do things that we think of are hard in our life. <laughs> like going to work or doing the ironing or, you know, we do things that sometimes our brain doesn't want to, but we do them because we want the outcome. We just don't decide that it's good or bad. We just do it. We just get on with it. So can you come into that neutral space with some of the healthy habits you want to create? It's just what I'm doing. And then brain will have its tantrum. It'll tell you this is the, the wrong way. We should be doing it this other easier way that we've always done it. You can just go, that's okay, brain. This is the way I'm doing it now. Finally, sometimes it's good for things to be hard. Overcoming the hard is what gives us a great sense of pleasure and accomplishment and growth in our life. So don't make it too hard. Right? Make it easier. Use these techniques to make it easy. And we also get the accomplishment of overcoming it, of actually achieving our goals. There's another way that making it hard is actually useful too, though. We can add friction to the default habit that we want to change. If it's a habit we no longer want to be doing, we can actually reverse these and make it harder. We can make it more inconvenient. We can add steps. We can put more obstacles in the way. We can reduce the automation and manually do more of the steps rather than doing them on autopilot, right? We can consciously not practice. When you do that, right, it means that you're much more likely to not want to do the old habit, right? Think about that. If your unhealthy food choice is convenient, it's available, it's on the bench, or it's right at the front of the cupboard, run the front of the fridge, it's inside, the packet's open, um, it's on a clear container, it's very easy to get to. Maybe you want to think about, it. can I make it harder? Can I put it somewhere else? Can I make it difficult to get to? Can I get it out of sight? Particularly when you combine it with making the healthy choice easier and more convenient. Putting the two together really does help you switch. Okay. Remember, you don't have to do it all at once. Break it up into smaller pieces, make each step a little easier, and then make that commitment to practice. If you want to help with that, make sure you download the default to desired routines worksheet. That's the worksheet in the link here. Um, I put some options in there for you to practice your mindset, what am I believing? What do I want to believe? What are my habits and routines? What are the action steps I could be taking? What else is possible, etc. But I've also put um, a couple of options in there. There's one page to break it down into steps and make a commitment to just doing one step every day for 30 days or for 31 days I put in there for a month. Or if it's something that you do either multiple times a day or less than once a day, a couple of times a week, something like that, I put a separate 
um, commitment checklist where you can track a hundred repetitions of the new behavior. That's often a good guide. By the time you've done something a hundred times, your brain's getting pretty familiar for it. You probably find it's much easier than it was the first five times. Okay, so grab those worksheets, fill them out, use them, track the changes that you're making. Remember that if you do need more help identifying those unhelpful patterns, right, breaking the steps down in, into to smaller, more obtainable pieces, or if you need help sustaining your changes, then let's have a conversation. Head over to livemorelife.com.au and request a free consultation. I offer any of my potential clients, anyone who needs some help, an hour to sit with you and find out what's going on in your life. You can draw on my experience of helping people create change. Now, this is my jam. I love talking habits. I love brainstorming new approaches. I love helping you find the hidden barriers that are blocking you from your success, helping you get them out of the way. I want you to know you really can have the life and the results you want. And I believe that accumulating these small, tiny, easy habit changes is the best path to get there. Well, if this has been helpful for you, give me a like, give me a heart, give me a reaction. If you're watching on YouTube or on my video blog, make sure you subscribe so you get notified of every new video when it comes out. I'd love to hear your ideas about any topics uh, that you'd like to have me cover in these videos or any uh, challenges you're having so I can think about how to support you and help you. And of course, if you know someone who would be helped by hearing the message in this video today, please tag them in the comments or send them the link to the video. I really do want to help as many people as possible. I want to help you make it easy so that you get to succeed. I know how good it feels. I want you to have that. Alrighty. Well, for now, I'd love to know, what will you do this week to make healthy easy? What habit will you make even easier this week? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. For now, have a fantastic week. Look after yourself and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Bye for now.